I have a crazy friend that, who came up with a way to test that, that if you create a synthetic or not. So this, uh, he said that, that if you are holding it and you are not sure, you cannot tell unless you close your eyes and hold it and focus on your fingertips to see if you can feel the bump. It works, uh, you can feel better if you are not watching it. At the same time, he didn't come up with a solution about that problem. It's not centered, so what are we going to do? So, I think you can do part by part by centering the, the top part first, then start slowing down to kind of push the excess clay back into the, the uh, parts that's not really filled enough. Because if you keep pushing to one direction, you will never feel that little bump here and there with the clay because it's always working in a spiral motion in one direction. So the, what we can do is to uncoil it back into the, the fill. So theoretically, it should work, right? So this is going to be a gigantic uh, cup too. <laughs> it's <hope> American. It's <laughs> <laughs> Super size. <laughs> So again, I use this sponge. Um, it's it's easier for me because it's not bulky, so that the, I can hold it down to make it bulky, or I could just use it to wrap things around. <coughs> then the, the, another little trick that the island is that if you accidentally kind of make it open up and you want to close it back to the, the straight sheet in your face, but if you just keep pushing it and squeezing this way, usually you end up with the, the sort of a wavy pattern, right? And you will never be able to fix it. Once it, uh, it kinked up, that it will never be able to be fixed. So I figured out if you hook one finger inside while you are squeezing, it doesn't matter which way or which finger, you can squeeze without making kink because there's a pressure from the inside to push out while you are pushing it in. And that big, if it's with one hand, usually you're going to end up, doesn't matter which finger you use, usually you end up with pushing the same spot from the inside and the outside, and you can even out the pressure. So the clay won't start running out to the different directions. It took me 10 years to figure it out. <laughs> but now that I can do it, uh, you can do it too. So when I make the... Uh, cup or a drinking vessel, and I always make the cylinder first. Also, I will be very careful leaving enough clay on the top. A good friend of mine told me that uh, this is like a um, laundry hamper. Do you know that the wire things that's um, the made with the net and the wire, mm. that the wire is on the top and the bottom, and the, in the, uh, the, the wall is basically just a, a freezing net. So he said that the ceramic part at this point is just like that. The important part is the top rim to support the structure, and the bottom part to stick to the, the wheel. Everything else is movable. And if you make it too thin, it's okay as long as you have the top rim to support it. So I always leave enough clay here. And if there's an unevenness, I will start from the top and throw down, pinching the, both spot, the, the same spot from the inside and outside to again, uncoil or unwind the clay back into the 
more even thickness. For the, the pieces I make quite often, that uh, I alter the shape because if I attach the handle, it's a huge burden to the structure and that it will most likely work because of the weight of the handle. So I want to give myself a little wiggle room. It's okay to work, that does, the people can still enjoy using it or accept the workage it, uh, within a sort of a loose design. So also, if I'm gonna touch a handle, I tend to make a loop handles like this. It's a uh, one puppet loop, so for that reason, I need a little bump or hip here to support the, the handle too. So, push. So when I make a drinking vessel, I don't want to have an extreme proportion. So for example, this one is really pushing. It's not because <coughs> the, the bottom part is bulky, it's because there is a, a, a in and out here. That's the problem. <coughs> when I try to drink it, because of the bump, then it may gonna just come up. Um, the, the liquid may, may not pour onto my face all of a sudden because of the bumpiness. If it's a straight line or close to the straight, the, the, the movement of the liquid, liquid will be a smoother so that I don't need to worry about just showering myself with some hot <laughs> liquid or booze either way. So again, the, the, this assignment is it's okay to be sculptural or conceptual, right? Yep. So that the, you don't need to worry about it if you are making a non-practical piece. But if you are thinking about making a practical piece, then you may want to think twice before you go to the extreme shape. Again, I, my pet peeve is about the rim, too, of the drinking vessels, because it's almost the only um, device that makes a, a direct contact to your lip in the Western serving system. Maybe the city of Wall too, but um, the drinking vessel is definitely going to make a direct contact. So you have to think about how to make it reasonable. Also, that it makes a huge impression too, just like the lips on human face. That um, I want to have a thick, safe, rim that it can go into the uh, dishwasher and I don't need to worry about it, if it's gonna get broken. The one good solution I learned from a North Carolina potter, Ellen Shankin, is to how to reduce the volume of the rim or visually um, reduce the volume. Just like you did, right? Yeah, it's just bubble it. and then clean it up. So, because my pieces are so thin, I cannot use chamois on the rim. The chamois is too heavy and too bulky. So, one teacher told me I can use a newspaper or a paper towel to just clean up on the rim. These are the only tools I use for throwing. Now, it doesn't matter if I'm making the big pots or small pots. These are the almost only things. Is that a credit card there? Uh, the sample. Oh, okay. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I particularly like the American Express because it's transparent, so I can see the other side and then how much slip bulks uh -huh. up. Very nice. Yes. So for this type of cup, then I used to stick my hands into it and make the bump first. Then that the, there was a, so much warpage that uh, it always the cup always went warped. So I changed the way to start with the top, and because my fingers are not quite um, big enough to tug, I want to make sure. Also, the bonus point is because I'm using the, the wet fingers so that the, the water dribbles down from my finger vertically. So that means I will have a really good indicate 
but time where to bump outside as well. And uh, the loop handle that um, I'm making it, that it was out of the necessity, but I repeated often enough so now, now people take it as my style. So my clay is very finicky. If I try to attach anything at the laser hand stage, it will show the hairline crack right there. So I have to, if there's any part I want to attach, then I always have to attach it before the design stage, before trimming. That's the only um, window I have. So unfortunately, the uh, handle fits right into that problematic section because the wall is so thin, that means I cannot attach it too early, the wall will collapse. Then that the, if it's too late, then that the, all of the, the cut will show the hairline cut. That's very unprofessional, at least for my design. So. So you put it on when it's wet, the handle. Yes. Wow, I so, thought it was the different one. <laughs> if it's the stoneware, I can attach it right after I make the piece. Okay. If it's my clay, then then I have to wait for 20, 30 minutes. Okay. But I cannot wait more than one hour. All right. So that gets really obsessive. So the only trouble, folks, with attaching it before you trim it, guess how fast that handle's moving around. Mm -hmm. So you will have to be very careful. Yeah, so I, I hope that the your clay is more important so that the, you make the handle, you make the cup, and the handle dry up much faster than your cup, so that the, you have to find the catch the good timing to attach the handle before the handle completely dries out. And it, their clay is very flexible stoneware. It's nice. the same that you have there. Mm -hmm. So if you can't see her attach the handle, uh, she just did it, and uh, you can see that she does this really unique loop mm -hmm. for the handle. So again, that, that this is based on the necessity that my clay is so important that I have to use a tension to support the structure. And if I do the regular handle, like a top and the bottom is connected, that the bottom will always crack because the bottom part is the thinner part, the thinner section of the handle, right? So always make this so that, that this thicker portion here is more bulky, and the worst case scenario, it will pull the hand, uh, pull the cup to the, the direction so hard that it will warp the cup. So I, I, that means my handle has to be even on the one contact spot here. So to support that loop structure, this wall has to go in. It cannot come out because then the handle will flop and it will take the cup with it. So this is really like a, my only solution I have right now, but I just pretend that that's my style. <laughs> <laughs> this is a way that some production people use. This is the cheapest shower cotton from Walmart. And let it stick. The point is, it's just a layer to make it stick to the uh, surface. So that it could be the wheel head or it could be the plastic bag, but it doesn't stick to the wooden bag. So since I made a gigantic bag, that saucer has to be gigantic as well. Trust me, then if I make the, the salsa um, socket here mm -hmm. before or after. So usually when I make the uh, cup with salsa, I make 10 pieces or 10 sets. So that the, what I do is to 
I don't even measure the cup here because <coughs> this foot ring is more flexible. I can adjust the foot ring, make it bigger or smaller later. On the other hand, the socket here, if I say, let's say three inches, and make templates boom, 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 with three inches, it's so much easier for me to trim the foot ring later to go with the three inches diameter here. Does it make sense? Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. If you're making one piece, it doesn't matter. You can go either way. But if you are producing a lot, that, that this can probably save some time. So I'm using here to make the um, sort of a straight pattern here. And I do the same going in and going out to make it even. So now, start moving away. So this is basically a really, really short and a wide cylinder to me. Again, going back to the design solution, that if your saucer is super high and you started worrying about how the handle can fit on top of it without butting into it, then that the one solution is to modify the saucer. Just give one spot open so that you can put the handle to accommodate and or you can start applying it to make it look like a design so that it's going to be natural. So my general rule is if the cup is straight, the center point here is the safest choice. If your cup is wide open, like a um, teacup shape, wide open, then that the handlebars will go up to accommodate the widest spot here. If your cup is bottom heavy, this way, that the handle can be slightly more bottom than the, cent the center part here, so that the, when you pick up the part, pick up the, the entire cup, the heaviest part is supported. Does it make sense? Mm -hmm. So that the, the, the other parts are not that heavy, so you are supporting the heaviest part directly, so it doesn't feel dangling or like unbalanced. Then peel it. So you can trim the bottom just a little bit without losing any inch of cream. So I wrote uh, lots of shower curtains, so if you are up for it... <laughs> That's a good idea. Yeah, just let me know. It's just disappointingly easy. You usually forget it's there. Okay, any questions? So then thank you for your time. All right. If I screw up, could you... <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, I'll edit it out. <laughs> I will. Oh, It'll be at the very beginning of the video so that everyone will see it. Oh boy, this is going to be a... It's a monster cut. Yes. <laughs> <laughs>